right to organize in your workplace is an attack on the sacred right of working people to the secret ballot, even though it does nothing to take away the secret ballot and just punishes companies who deny a fair election. Climate change. Climate change is a secret scam to have the government take over your family. Right? This is this is what's written down in black and white in the number one selling political book in the country. Right? It's not a problem, the addressing of which might hurt the profits of some major corporations. It's a secret scam to invade your family. Right? And through all of this, we're not supposed to notice that Glenn Beck works for a major, yes, transnational corporation corporation with interests and shared board members with other corporations that back everything that Glenn Beck is backing. Right? So you now have these these rallies where people are out there shouting, fascism, that's fascism. Right? And they have a point if they're looking at the military and the wars, if they're looking at the banker bailouts and the auto bailouts, if they're looking at what presidential power has become, if they're looking at our use of the military domestically now, if they're looking at the corporate control of elections in multiple senses there. If, but if they look at going to rallies organized by a major corporation, the news corporation, Fox News, that serves their political party, the Republican Party, and other industry front groups, and shouting exactly what they're told to shout, by these corporate interests and these voices from inside the power structure in Washington and threatening violence against minorities. There is nothing more exemplary of a trend toward fascism than exactly what is being done by the people with the signs that say, stop the fascism. <coughs> you look at what ExxonMobil does now, right? They, they pay the Heritage Foundation to put out reports that say, if we control <coughs> greenhouse gases, your heating bill will go up and you'll have to pay four dollars a gallon for gasoline. Then they create front front groups that go out and organize rallies of the angry people who have been misled to believe they should be shouting about four dollar a gallon gasoline. Then ExxonMobil goes and publicly supports the bill to control the greenhouse gas to make it look even worse. And then they get the news stations to cover the rallies as if it's a, a grassroots movement. And then they buy up the ads in between the news stories about the rallies. This is what this is what money can do, right? And if the Supreme if, if five members of the Supreme Court have their way, which our brand new member of the Supreme Court has challenged yesterday, uh, these these corporations will be able to spend any amount of money they choose on our elections. We ain't seen nothing yet, right? Not just money for elections, but any money they choose. And one percent of their budget will swamp anything we've seen thus far. And so what does Glenn Beck recommend to deal with all of this? Buying guns. Buying guns. This is what he recommends. In the, at the end of his book, he says, I propose a test for trusting our government. If gun sales go up, it means people don't trust their government. If gun sales go down, <coughs> and people now have faith in their government. This is, this is what we need to do to show our distrust of the government. We need to go out and buy guns. Right? And you see these people at these rallies, uh, not to mention the guy who blew up a building here with this, with this quote of Thomas Jefferson about watering the tree of liberty with the blood of tyrants. Quoting, you notice they quote the guy who started the Democratic Party. They don't quote Abraham Lincoln on this one. Right? Wouldn't make much sense. It would look a little bit funny. And it's not... It's not tyranny they object to. It's not power in the hands of the president they object to. Last year, if you had dared to question a president, dared to suggest he shouldn't speak to school students, he would be a bad American. He would be an evil traitor. They don't object to tyranny. They object to the presidential power in the hands of certain people and certain parties and certain agendas. Uh, and they don't want to solve it. They don't want to take power away from the presidency. You know, Jefferson thought that he had put something in place for these times, uh, something that's mentioned in the Constitution more often than anything else, 
and described in the Constitution in more detail than anything else that we were expected to use very frequently and we've used relatively rarely. It's called impeachment. Impeachment was to get rid of tyrants before they completely took over without violence because there is no way that violence is going to solve any of our problems. But it may very well distract people from what is happening in this country and the corporate takeover in this country. And I think we have to pay close attention to this right-wing rage machine, uh, the, the, the front groups that fund it and what goes on in the minds of these people that are part of it. Um, I think it's, it's dangerous and has to be addressed. But you don't address it by appeasing. Right? When Glenn Beck says, go fire Van Jones, you don't say, yes, sir, and then think, you know, he's going to like me now. He's going to talk good about me now. No, he immediately comes up with four more guys he wants fired. Right? You don't, you don't defund a poor people's group like ACORN and then think that the Republicans are going to like me now when the Republicans have already been completely voted out of power in Washington. They ought not to be controlling anything at all. They ought not to be setting the agenda. And yet, the Democrats who will play only defense do this in some misguided sense that they're going to better work together across the aisle by attacking, by attacking. You have top Democratic fundraiser Paul Miner rotting in prison, having been prosecuted for nothing by Karl Rove's goons and hundreds of similar cases, including a former governor of Alabama, you have the group that went out and registered more Democratic voters than anybody else now being completely defunded by the Democrats. And the Democrats not lifting a finger for their donors, for their governors, for their political prisoners, or for the group that have, have gone and done the street work for them because they, they think it's politically advantageous to attack their friends and to leave their enemies alone. They won't impeach J. Bybee, torture memo author, now lifetime judge, because they would be accused of going after a conservative judge. Never mind that he legalized torture. Right? And you don't you don't limit the the, the enragement of these of this right wing machine by giving them ninety percent of what they want. Right? You don't say, We're not gonna ask for single payer health care. We'll, we'll let the insurance companies write the bill. We'll just have some token good things in there, and then we'll all get along, and that'll pass, and that'll be strategic. It just encourages them. It just encourages them. If you had come out on day one and said, we're going to prosecute all of the outgoing criminals for their crimes. we got a former president and vice president confessing to torture on television on a regular basis now. We're going to prosecute these people. We're going we're gonna to throw out the filibuster. We're going to pass the Employee Free Choice Act tomorrow. We're going to have single-payer health care within a year. What would these people have done? They would have turned out in exactly the same numbers. They would have accused the president of being born in Africa. They would have started bringing guns to rallies. They would have called people socialists. Exactly, exactly what they do now, except maybe less, because giving them 90% of what they want does not appease them. It encourages them. It encourages them. Um, there, I, I, driving over here, I got a phone call, somebody telling me that, that seven CIA directors just wrote to President Obama asking him to tell Eric Holder to call off any sort of investigation of torture. Right? You'll recall that Eric Holder has proposed an initial investigation into whether to investigate, whether to prosecute bad apples, low-ranking CIA employees who may have strayed from the illegal policy with openly stating, as the President did too, that there should be immunity for those who made the policy, for those who ordered the torture done. Uh, that's not good enough. That doesn't appease the CIA. The CIA wants complete immunity for everybody. Never mind the fact that this is banana republic territory for a President to be deciding who's under the law and who's above it and telling law enforcement how to enforce laws for political reasons. It's not the president's business. The attorney general has to answer to the law, not to a president, and not to the CIA. Absolute insanity, absolute open admission that we are going to be a nation of men, not a nation of laws. 
the opposite of what John Adams 